All right, guys, let's go ahead and get started um, today. If, uh, if I could go ahead and have uh, any other MVPs um, raise their hand within the conference, just so that I can uh, easily um, see you in there. Welcome. With that said, welcome everybody to uh, MVP Office Hours. Uh, got a uh, small turnout today, but that's okay. That gives everybody more time to ask questions. So, um, thanks for joining. Um, just real quick, just just real quick, a couple ground rules um, that I like to go over. Um, if you're not speaking, try to mute your uh, mute your line. Um, that, just because all lines are going to be open, so that way it uh, makes it easier for everybody. Um, if you're uh, if you're joining um, via the the web meeting as well, um, as opposed to just dialing in, uh, you can raise your hand um, within the uh, the web meeting, or you can just drop something on the chat. Um, or if you're just joining by phone, just um, simply uh, um, interrupt us um, when we're uh, at a break, and we'll. Be happy to um, go on your questions. If we don't have any questions, if we start running low, I'll, I'll start to uh, pick on people. If you uh, uh, see if you have any questions, uh, we want to make sure this is valuable for you. So, um, for uh, those of you who don't, uh, who I haven't met before, uh, my name is Jared Kingston. Um, I'm a Salesforce MVP, and I work at Aperio um, as a business analyst, and I, I kind of head up the. Uh, Organization of MVP Office Hours. So um, I don't see. Looks like I'm running solo today, which is totally fine. Um, so um, happy to uh, happy to help you guys. So um, with that said, no no need to introduce any any other MVPs um, because I'm the only one today. So uh, with that said, any uh, who who has a question, um, feel free. I don't see anything in the chat or any raised hands, so feel free to speak up if you have any questions, and we'll uh, I'll try to answer them. Hi, Jared. This is Kashi here. Hey, Kashi. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, so my question is, uh, if I want to implement the sort functionality for any list view, how do I do that? So sort functionality within a list view? Yeah, or any so, custom Visual Force page. Uh, if you have a list of records, you know, you have 10, 10 line items you want to implement the sort functionality so you can sort up and down. So, um, well, within a, a list view in general, you, um, you should simply be able to click on that. If you're just looking to basically sort the row by, you know, say, ascending, um, A to Z or... Actually, uh, not, not that. Let's say if I have a custom object and I have my own list view, uh, okay. I'm seeing the list of records. I want to change the order of those custom sorting. You know, I want to see number fifth row to be number one. Because it shows based on the create date or whatever the filter you have. But if I want to have a custom sort order, like let's say I have an additional field called sort order, Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So, so you're talking within the actual like page layout. Um, yeah. You're looking at the related list. Okay. Yeah. So, what you want to do is, um, and you know what I'm actually going to do here is I'll go ahead and and are you in the you're in the yep. web meeting, right? Yep. And this is okay. a tutorial I found one. Someone is doing jQuery. I just pasted the URL with the Visual Force page. But I don't okay. know if that's the right way or that's the best way of doing it. So wait, and is it in a Visual Force page or just the standard? Uh, this example that I sent you, that is in a Visual Force page, and he's using the JavaScript, uh, the client side scripting, to allow drag and drop jQuery so you can sort the list based on your one. For some reason. Now I'm opening it. All right, so uh, let me look at this. Okay, so you're interesting. So you're okay. You're doing this in a Visual Force page. So so you're looking for guidance on how to um, change Best the sort order within yeah. the Visual Force page. 
Visual Force well, page. It looks like I have to create a custom Visual Force page because with the default page layout, you don't get much capability to implement your own custom sort order, right? Well, um, yes and no. So what I'll say from the standard page is um, when you go in to edit the page layout, mm -hmm. um, if you go down to, and I'm doing this myself so I can um, talk you through it. So if you go down to that related list and you know click the little wrench um, on the list, you'll notice um, that will bring up that related list properties and you'll have the sort by column. So you know you can choose the columns to, s to sort by and it will only choose the columns that you have selected um, to show on that related list. So you know theoretically yeah you could create a custom field that is uh, you know called sort order or you know the you know numbering that you'd want it to be in and then you can sort it either ascending or descending. Um, you know, that would be the way you would have to do it through the standard UI. Um, you know, obviously, uh, you know, you could get a little bit fancier with, with Visual Force and, um, and the, uh, and Brian Kwong just, just joined us and he may, he probably, he'll know more than, than I do from a Visual Force side, um, on, uh, potentially how to do custom sorting. Brian, any, any, uh, so here's, a, here's a scenario what I did. I created a new object, right? Simple uh -huh. standard object, right? You put five or six fields on it, uh, so I can I can save different records. And then mm -hmm. when you click and create a tab and you go there, it shows you the view, right? It shows you the mm -hmm. list view, and you can see all those. Now, whatever the record has been created, I created a custom visual for space to show the list of those records that you have, let's say. And I wanted to give an ability if I can allow user to put a custom sort order. The list view gives you the list view and you can sort based on the header. But I wanted to have a custom field where I can say this is a particular sort order for that record. And then when I go to my custom visual force page, I see the records in that particular sort order. Because right now, by default, I have a sort order on my custom visual force page is by uh, create date. Whenever you create the record, it's just sort based on that. So, is, are your records in a list? Yeah, like okay. uh, the object and there's just a list. I wanted to have another field in there. Let's say every record has a sort order field. So, I want to display this particular line item. Um, number one, number two, number three, number four. So in a custom visual force page, let's say I'm creating a visual force page to look at the mobile device or iPad, something. I want you to see the record in that order that I have defined in the sort order field, not the standard list view. So there are, there are you can do custom sort. There's a, a number of different blog posts out there that will have it. Um, I'm yeah, trying to find, I pasted find one, one. There, uh, in the chat, if you see. I uh, it yeah, unfortunately, yeah. I don't see the chat. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. yeah uh, um, typically, typic there, there's, a, uh, there's a couple of different things. Well, you, you're going to need a wrapper class regardless. Um, okay. Your wrapper class would hold uh, essentially the sort order you want to display and then all your records. Um, the way I do it is I have a sort utility that I'm actually trying to find where I grab that from. Um, and that sort utility um, lets me basically just pass my uh, wrapper class over and say sort by whatever, sort by name, sort by uh, a number, whatever the case may be. And, and then have the sort, uh, the sort utility would do the sorting for me and then return the sort order. Um, the challenge that you have to do that is, is if it's server side versus client side. So if you have a lot of records on your Visual Force page mm -hmm. and someone changes the sort order, um, it can lag your page quite a bit because it's going out to the server to do the sort and then coming back. Um, there are some sort options for jQuery if you want to try doing it on the client side. Mm -hmm. um, I have not tried that myself, um, but I've seen a few posts um, if you do jQuery 
uh, sort order. I'm, I'm sure you can find some that show uh, like a, a, almost like a list view and, and, and changing the sort order through co by clicking on a column. Um, but I haven't tried it myself. I found one with the jQuery one, and that guy has the drag and drop and doing it using the JavaScript on the client side. And uh, but it does not, because definitely need to have a, a field that holds that sort order. What he's doing, every time you move a row up and down, he updates the entire list in the for loop, which I don't like. I'm thinking if I have a list, I can have them drag and drop it whichever way they want, which record to show up or down, and then just update the list once. So when they go back and look at the Visual Force page, they see the list. Because I'm just showing the title or the link for the record. They should see the link in that particular order. So, so the sort utility that you use, did you create that your own, or is it something? Oh that no, I, I grabbed it from someone else. Um, can you can you share I, that? I'm trying to find it right now, okay. actually. Uh, and so I didn't get your name, Brian, oh, right? Th yeah, this is Brian Kwong. Oh, Brian Kwong. So I, I, know, I know you. The wizard cap, right? That's, that's right. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, Kashi, I'm, I'm Kashi from the, we, we usually on the button click admin, we log post, uh, comment post each other. Oh, yeah. And I'm from Minnesota, the Twin Cities user group. Oh, well, hello, neighbor. <laughs> um, <laughs> hello. Okay. Let's, let's see yeah. if I was smart and actually put where it is. And of course, I did it. Um, here, here's what I do: is I'm going to copy the custom sort I do because what um, <coughs> I'll copy the cat class and uh, shoot over the files here. Uh, what's your email address? I'll, I'll, or no, better yet, I'll post, okay, I'll, I'll post this in our community success group. Um, okay. In case there's other folks do out you there want that me to would like to message either. you right there. Um, no, I'll just post it in the group itself. Okay. Um, so let me grab that, and I'll even grab the test class to make it a little bit easier. And if I can find out where, if I can find uh, my notes where I grabbed this from, I will share that as well. That will be great. Hi, Uh, but yeah, the the method I'm posting does use uh, server side sorting, so it does it, it can lag, um, but it works. All right. So you're posting there. I'll just apply there. So okay. Mhm. Mm because I know Andy uh, from the developer user group. Uh, my co-leader, he implemented some sorting, but he did not update the list on the back end. He was just doing the calendar sorting up, moving the row up and down. And I'm trying to update the object, you know, and save the record also, and then show that list based on the sort order. Yeah. All right. Awesome. So, are we get? Does that kind of help? Um, does this that does. help? The, awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, I will look into what Brian has to share, and then. Um, awesome. Uh, I'll try to play with it. Cool. Thanks, Brian. Um, yeah, it'll be in the group shortly. Sure. Cool. That's awesome. Laura has a Laura. You had a question on can bucket fields be used for charts? Um, and the answer to that question is actually yes. So you should be able to use bucket fields for charts. I actually did one for a client the, uh, a couple of weeks ago. Um, are you having issues with that, or are you just curious? Um, um, I don't, can you hear me? That's my first time to be in one of these. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no, I can hear you. OK. Um, you know, a colleague was working on it, and he asked me to you know, to toss a question across. And I'm like, I don't know. And I tried. I'm still learning um, how to do fancier reports. And uh, dashboard. And so I just popped into one of ours that where I, I have a bucket field on a matrix report, and I couldn't see uh, the bucket field name never was presented anywhere to include in the chart. 
so um, he subsequently said he figured something out, and I haven't popped over to see what he did. So I don't know if there's gotcha. anything you can put on the screen to show an example or something. Um, uh, let me um, let me see. I don't yeah, know how so this work. I mean, I don't see anything but the MVP office hours. Is there something more I should see on the screen? Yeah, usually we usually we just do audio, but let me uh, let me see if I can um, pull something up here real quick. Yeah, because I, I did it the other day. It was mainly um, you know, sorting a um, essentially a number field. It was or bucketing a number field. Uh, and the main thing is, yeah, as long as you have that, um, you need to make sure that you have it not only in the. So, were you using in the dashboard, or were you? Uh, were you trying to do it in the dashboard, or um, did you have a, the chart in the actual report itself? Just real quick, just to try and see if I could do it. I just I was doing it in the report itself. Do I need to be in the dashboard? No, I was I was just kind of uh, curious because you know sometimes on those uh, on a dashboard you you need to make sure that it's on the actual. Um, Pre-exists in the chart um, or in the yeah dashboard. report chart itself. So let me um let me. Here, let me just add a bucket field real quick. And, uh, and and are these sessions for more developer type people? Because like he's talking about Apex and all this, and I'm definitely a total button click beginner. So no, it's it's no. It, we usually try to. Um, Split it up and do uh, and do uh, you know the first half admin and you know developer, but you know we we just take questions and and try to answer them as best as possible essentially. Okay. So so here let me um. We are bucketing forecast. We're using <laughs> what we've been using bucket fields for a, a lot lately is as yeah. labels. Um, and so we have bucketed on this one that I grabbed. What's bucketed is forecast categories, so that we could uh, label them in uh, logical order because it default does it in alphabetical order, which is not logical from a forecast category standpoint. And what is um, and then the, the field that's being summed in the column of the matrix report is a currency field, but the bucket ca the bucket field itself is not a number. So is that maybe why I was having some challenges? No, it shouldn't be here. Let me let me just I'm gonna hopefully you should see my screen now. Um, can you see yep. it? Okay, cool. So yep. so here's what I did here. Um, is uh, essentially what I did here is I created this bucket field here just to and um, off this aging field. And all I did was put it as a, now this is just a summary report, but I just put it as a um, one of the um, groupings. So mm -hmm. as long as I have it as one of the groupings, I can come in here to my chart and select that as one of the, uh, as the x-axis, essentially. So, so it has to that be a row, a row element, not a column element, because ours is a column element. Yeah, correct. Yeah, so and, and that apl and that applies to any um, axis um, element, right? So whether you it's the x or y axis, um, or I guess I should say the x axis has to be a grouping, um, and then obviously it, for any other additional group buys, it needs to be a actual um, it needs to be sorting um, by that as a grouping. So yeah, so if if you add it as a grouping up. Uh, uh, in your report, then you should be able to select it as uh, uh, on your your uh, chart. Okay. Yeah, we, we we're using it in this particular case that I just randomly grabbed. We're using it more as a column sorting piece. Oh yeah, yeah. In order to yeah, so yeah, in order to do it, it, it just has, has to be, to be a grouping. Row. Yeah. A row grouping. Okay. All right. Cool. Correct. Thank you. Yeah. Not a problem. All right, um, Eric, you had a uh, question here. Um, can you provide some guidance on how companies deal with the 24-hour API request limits? Right. Seems, seems to be low for smaller companies who want to bring in larger amounts of data. Uh, any other stuff you want to add to that? Um, yeah, just uh, I mean maybe I was reading it um, 
incorrectly um, based on the, the limits, but we're working with a, a client that they think they're only going to have um, uh, 40 or 50 users <clears throat> on the system. Um, so and I think the, I thought that the API limit was 1,000 per user for a 24-hour period. So let's say they have 50, that's 50,000 records. And ordinarily that may not be an, an issue in a 24-hour period, but there's some, there could be some spikes where they do, you know, large uh, mass, you know, email or something that's, you know, just transactions coming in and out of the system where they can go over that. And I'm wondering what your experience yeah. has been to help um, companies, um, you know, avoid the, the, the hitting that limit. That's a good question. Bri I, I'm going to defer to Brian if I'm not, because I honestly haven't had experience with that just well, yet. Hasn't been an issue, okay. um, but um, Brian, have you had any experience from an API limit or anything like I that? I cry, typically. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the, the API limit is a little bit difficult because it's a 24-hour period, but the 24 hours is, is based on GMT. Um, so if you're based in the United States, sometimes that can actually work in your favor. Um, since it's not you know midnight to midnight to your local time zone, it's whatever GMT is. So yeah. it kind of resets in the middle of the business day. But right. if that's not even enough for you, um, you have essentially three options. Um, option one is take a look at what your API calls are doing and seeing if you can do it on a less frequent basis. Um, so you're sending in over more data, but you're just doing it not as frequently. Okay. Uh, depending on your business use case, that may or may not be helpful. Um, option two is take a look at what edition you're using and upgrade your edition. Um, so if you're using Enterprise, take a look at uh, – well, Unlimited doesn't exist anymore, so that would be uh, uh, Performance Edition because um, that upgrade number? does include do they, more do they API. the number for API on that? Yeah, I'm pretty sure they increased the number on the API. I remember looking at it uh, when I was making the move to Enterprise to Unlimited, and there was an increase per user count uh, yeah. or per user. Um, the other option is contact your AE and buy more APA calls. I think you can buy them a la carte to your license. Um, but that would be a discussion for your, your account executive. Right. Well, I mean, so we, uh, just going to kind of, how do you really look at the? Is there is there a, a good tool to really look and see what's causing your API to hit? So um, maybe it's pretty obvious, um, uh, you know, that hey, you've got an email marketing tool that's that's doing a lot of the damage to it, or there's a you're bringing in a bunch of invoice and or you're popping invoice and order or exchanging invoice and order information with your order management system, um, you know, or, or or whatever else might be hitting the API. How do you, is there a good way to just organize and figure out which, what system or what is the culprit behind your, your transactions or, because I, I didn't see Salesforce providing anything, but I'm wondering if there's a partner or something else that someone's built that, that helps you manage that. Yeah, I mean, the nice thing about the API calls is um, it's almost always having to go through an existing user on your account. Um, okay. So, you know, some people, they'll create a user. Like, for example, I have one in my system from uh, when we had Informatica. That, that's all that user was for was as, uh, to get Informat Informatica connected. Um, okay. So you can look through your user list and see if anything screams out at you. Um, okay. You can also take a look at the login history of your users. Um, there is, I forget what the field is called, but there's a, like a login type in where it'll tell you things like, hey, this is the browser they logged into, or it's through Salesforce for Outlook, or whatever the case may be. Okay. Um, a lot of the big vendors will have their own special type in there. So for example, I believe Marketo is one, and when they connect through the Salesforce API, they actually come as a separate type. So it kind oh, of depends on who's doing it. Um, but you should see if it's an API call versus if it's if they're not going through the browser, that's pretty much a good indication that they're coming in someplace else, and it's pretty easy to rule out, okay, it's not mobile, it's not Salesforce or Outlook, it's probably an API. Okay. Um, so that can help give you an idea, um, but that doesn't necessarily um, tell you why it's connecting so often. 
but it can kind of help you identify who's connecting through the API and allow you to start having those internal conversations of what it's doing. Okay, um, that's, that's cool. Yeah, well, I no, think. What, yeah, go ahead. I was going to say, so what? Like, let's say you've hit your whether you're on um, enterprise or performance edition. Let's say you hit your limit and you haven't purchased more. Does it? Is it a? It just cuts off, or does it? Um, do they give you let you do what you want to do, and then come back to you and say, hey, we're going to bill you for the overage, or you work something out? Uh, I, that's what I'm kind of wondering. Like, if you don't know and you're not measuring and you go over, basically, what happens? So I believe if you hit 100%, it's done. <laughs> okay. uh, I, don't th I don't think it gives you a warning. You can actually set up in your system uh, an API usage notification. Um, if you go into setup and go to the quick find and just type API, it's under the monitor uh -huh. item. And okay. you can say uh, set, send a notification to this user when we hit a certain percentage threshold of our API calls okay. in your 24 hours. and that will at least give you that ping to say, hey, um, you're about to hit your threshold. Uh, okay. But that won't tell you what's causing you to hit the threshold. Yeah, but at least you know, hey, it's your, your it, you can start doing the investigative work. Okay, so this, yeah. this is great. Now, I mean, it sounds like um, there's uh, you know three options. Um, you can look at the API uh, or the login type might give you some clues, but the bottom line, there there isn't some. Uh, report or screen or even maybe a partner tool that really gives you a, a good um, analysis of how many transactions you're you're using per day. So I think that's yeah, um, not the, not that I'm aware of. I'm I'm sure there's probably something out there that I just don't know off the top of my head. Yeah. Because um, it's been a while since I've had to worry about a, a API usage. Um, okay. It may be worth just shooting an email out to your account executive. And say, hey, you know, you're doing this, doing this, and say, is there any other information you may ha could help us provide? Because they may actually have a, a reports on Salesforce side yeah. about your your uh, historical uh, usage, and that might help you as well. Okay, oh, that's great, great info. Oh, I really, really appreciate it. You're welcome. Awesome, awesome. All right, who else? Uh, I don't see any new questions in the uh, in the chat. Is anybody who else has a question? Out there. Um, this is Eric again. I, I, have, I have another, um, just me, this isn't so much a question. As I'd love to just get your thoughts on, um, uh, I was talking to a, a, a client yesterday or the day before yesterday just about the, the Salesforce mobile and what do you use. And I think they're starting to, you know, they, they've got um, a few iPhone products, a few iPad products, and it kind of seems like they're trying to consolidate them, but I'm not really sure. Um, and I see that you know, Salesforce Classic is still around, but what are you advising, particularly, um, Jared, since you work for Aperio and, and probably see a lot of clients, what's, what's the general stance on how do you advise you know, your clients on um, you know, what, what, what's a good mobile tool to use so that they don't have to roll out, you know, hey, you need these two mobile apps to go use Salesforce or what have you? Well, I will, I will say, um, you know, I, I I actually just started a Perio back in June, and I haven't I haven't actually been on a mobile project yet. But okay. you know, I, m my personal opinion, I guess, is especially with the the latest release of uh, of Chatter, is you know, there's a there's a lot in there that you can do right yeah. now with the uh, with the new Chatter. You can you can make Visual Force pages um, visible on there with um, uh, whether it's in a tab or or somewhere else within the app, so that I mean that's huge, right? Um, that that helps um, bring some functionality down to that app, some custom functionality. Um, you know that, so that that to me would be the easiest thing, c just because it has chatter in there, and then mm -hmm. you can have other objects in there, and, and you can create records from there. So, you know, I think that's that's nice. You know, obviously, uh, you know, we at Aperio have built custom apps for people on the uh, force.com platform mm -hmm. um, and made them available um, as far as iOS and Android but you know you know that's only if they have a specific you know need of we need this mobile app to do this um, and this only so um, Eric, or, uh, Brian I don't know if do you have any you know thoughts on that 
Yeah, I, I'm a big fan of the new uh, Chatter mobile mm-hmm. apps, especially. Uh, I wish they would give some more love to the Android versions, but if you're on iOS, they're fantastic. Um, that's typically where I'm trying to push our users, okay. um, simply because one of the one of the things that will be is that it supports uh, the connective apps functionality. So from a security standpoint, it's going to give me a lot more control over who can who's in using what and how are they authenticating. Um, and if they're going out and grabbing like a random uh, application that probably wasn't even built by Salesforce.com, uh, chances are it, it's just hey, they give their username and password, and who knows what happens with it. Um, mm-hmm. The other reason why I kind of push people towards that method is um, I think Salesforce is going to start doing a lot more mobile functionality. Um, and you can see that just with the, the new Chatter Publisher actions, um, being able to hit that little plus sign on your iPhone or iPad and quickly add a new record from your opportunity. Um, mm-hmm. and pff, I'm not sure if it supports custom actions now, but I would imagine it's going to uh, in the future if it does it now, uh, which it could really let you have a, a lot of power using with the developer um, case be able to say you go and hit plus and then it's going to do a whole bunch of stuff for you. The thing I would caution people with is some people, the, the mobile is just too much. So for example, um, if I was talking to the president of sales, I would probably steer him towards using the Dashboard Viewer app, app for, mm-hmm. um, for his iPad instead of Chatter Mobile, just because it, it's specifically made for dashboards and it presents things nicely. Um, right. But if I was talking to one of my sales users, I would definitely push him towards the uh, Chatter Mobile app. Okay, but not the, um, not the, the Salesforce Classic anymore. Yeah, I, I kind of get the feeling because it, it's called Salesforce Classic now that mm-hmm. it may get phased out. Um, okay. But that's pure speculation. Yeah. I get that same feeling too. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I would look at it that because of what the Chatter Mobile can do versus the Classic one, um, I think you're going to get more functionality, more bang for your buck. The one thing that the Classic can do for you that – the Chatter Mobile doesn't is that pseudo offline mode where um, with the classic unit you actually set up a configuration of files for them to download to their phone and then there's some sort of a sync. But considering we're almost always connected almost everywhere we go, that's becoming less of and less of a problem. Um, yeah. And so I, I would I would push into that, especially because classic the classic version doesn't have all the functionality that's on the platform now. And the Chatter Mobile definitely looks like to be the one that's getting updated. You know, for example, um, Chatter. I don't think you can get Chatter from the classic version. Um, you can get it from, obviously, the Chatter the mobile version, um, which probably means somewhere down the line you're going to get a whole bunch of other pieces of information, like files and everything else, um, would probably come in a future update if it's not already there. I, have to, I should pull up my iPad and look, because I haven't looked recently. Okay. Well, that's, but, uh, that's great. Cool. Cool. Can Chatter, um, and, or can Chatter Mobile be configured so that you can, like Classic, you can select what field shows to give a reduced set of um, data on their phone? That's a good question. Um, I'm I'm not sure if it's available now, but I kind of get the hint that that's where it's going because if you look at some of the standard page layout editors, there's this little tiny link now that shows up at the top of the editor. And I, I, let's see, well, I'm i going to go into it and see if I can grab the name of it so I give you the correct name. But it, um, when I look at it, it looks like a compressed view. Yeah, um, compact layouts. Yeah. No, yeah. It's, yeah. It's, it's, and, and so that makes me believe that if it, you can't do it now, that you're going to be able to do it later. Um, the other route that you could do is if you have folks that are only on the mobile, um, you can have uh, have a, uh, a different page layout just for them for those records. Um, but that's, I haven't talked to too many people where they're only accessing Salesforce for mobile. Yeah, yeah. So the compact layouts does, does say, yeah, it's, it's where you can 
And like when you're searching for a record in Chatter Mobile, that's what's going to show on like the search results. Um, and then some other key areas as well. Um, Where do you s I'm, I'm on a page layout page. I see mini page layout, mini console view. Here, I'm going to show you my, my desktop here. So this is uh, my dev oh, org here. Yeah, it's okay, actually. I an account record and hit edit layout, so that's why I'm not. Yeah, so you have page layouts, and then they split it out here and do compact layouts. Yeah, thank you. I misspoke. So. And it comes with okay, the default, and then, and then you can create new ones. Okay, so that's for. And assign them as well, which is which is pretty cool. Okay. Yeah. Because we were starting yeah. on the path of classic, because. It looks like what they're used to, and seemed like we could still do a lot in there. And yeah, and you'll see past chatter all the time in the chatter mobile, and they don't want most of the time chatter. They want their records, and they want to do their stuff. Yeah, I mean, one of the reasons why I, I suggest people to use the chatter mobile versus the configuration is even if you don't want the chatter, getting access to your um, records that were not part of your initial configuration, you know, what your initial download was, seems to be faster than trying to do a search from your mo from Classic. Oh, okay. So, you know, because one of the big challenges I had with the Classic version was you had to set up your configuration to be just right to have that initial download through, because it can be a huge file for m mobile relative. Yes. Um, and uh, the organizations I always worked with that weren't as stringent on having owners as record uh, as people of the record, so you may have like an account that are quote unquote owned by multiple people, um, mm -hmm. and so the configuration file was just gigantic, uh, which decreased the valuable how valued. Let me try that again. It decreased how valuable it was, um, whereas. As the current version, if you don't see a record because it's not immediately in something that you recently looked at, it's very quick mm -hmm. to search. And in the classic, it seemed that I was waiting minutes for records to show up in a search. Yeah, because that's the other challenge I'm facing is how to define these data sets so that they're elegant and give them what they need. But it's um, it's uh, finding it's it's a little difficult to do. Yeah, I mean that that was one of the biggest things I didn't like because. Um, I think at one point I was up to 10 different configurations, um, and yeah. it's all because, you know, this one user wants to see it this way, this one user wants to see it that way. Um, and we didn't have all that many salespeople. I think I had like 60 salespeople I was dealing with at the time. Um, and, you know, so it, so was, it was a little you don't have that rough. same space issue with the chatter? It, 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 does it limit what it brings in, or does it not bring data into the phone on the Chatter Mobile versus the Classic Mobile? So it doesn't, why, is, why are the data it's not, not important? The, the so the difference is when the Classic Mobile, if you, what it does is you set up a configuration file, and when they log yep. in for the first time, it's actually downloading data from Salesforce onto the phone. And they did that for quick access purposes, right? Which means that yep. if you don't have it on your phone, you have to go back out to search just to the server. Right, right. And and that was a very slow process. With the Chatter Mobile, none of it's really saved on the phone. It's all being accessed directly through the server. And for whatever reason, oh, okay. it, it just seems faster to me. Yeah, uh, it is. It. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, I'll have to maybe go back and revisit the the two choices. Yeah, I mean, yeah, and what's nice too is is you know, I'm just looking at it here on my phone, you know, it's nice because yeah, it is a lot faster in it, you know, it shows like, you know, like for instance, I work a lot in issues and so in my issues tab, I can pull it up on my iPhone here and it shows the not only the recent ones I accessed, but the recent views I accessed and I can click on those views and see those you know, items within my phone, and it loads literally within like a second. So, um, and that's all with no configuration from the administrator, right? It's all yeah. just it just happens. So I have a quick question with the Chatter Mobile. Yeah. So is it possible to show? So you you have the home page narrow components like custom links and others. Is it possible to show those into Chatter Mobile? 
So I don't think so. I don't. I mean, I I don't think you can display the homepage component um, on there. I think right now you can only do. I mean, you can only do yeah. like the Visual Force pages as a either a tab or if it's like you know overriding like a new button or um, uh, or whatnot. So yeah, it would have to be one of those to actually show. Yeah, I think in the current ver the current <coughs> header mobile version, you, Visual Force pages are. You're out of luck. Um, yeah. It looks like it. Uh, I got it up on my on my iPad right now. And it's standard records work. I'm sorry, standard o objects work, and um, a lot of the custom ones seem to be working too. But I, none of the every single one, uh, tab is a non-visual force tab. So that might be something that's coming in a future update. Hard to say. Yeah, because we have a link to a visual force page, then that works in the classic, but not in the mobile, the chatter mobile. Yeah, I haven't tried it if I, for, if I have a link on a record that takes me to a Visual Force page. Um, oh. Oh. Oh, it did something yeah. called link. I'm just looking at it. It says when you go to any record and you cl click on the plus sign, it's saying link. You can go to the link. Interesting. Yeah, I don't get yeah, that. So, so that might be a custom publisher action. Yeah, exactly. Um, you can you can add those custom publisher actions that will show there. But um, so yeah, um, looks like Aaron. Aaron, you had a question here. Um, if there's a way to see within the interface why an email sent to email the case address was not added by email the case. Is that Any other information you want to share there, Aaron? Um, no, I think that's it. Email to case is set up as standard. You know, it's been working for months. Uh, it's just one email didn't seem to get added, and I just wondered if there's any way you can debug that or. Did you get an error message? From any log? No, no error messages either. Huh. So it was a bit um, strange. I put the question out to the community, and they've given me. Um, SOQL to try, which I will do probably on Monday. Uh, life's a bit too short for that moment. But. Yeah, the only the only time I've experienced email the case um, where the cases aren't going in, or either for s you end up with a validation rule or some sort of workflow rule um, that when the case gets created, it hits an error. Uh, or the email itself is above, I, th I think it's 10 MB. Uh, which is the max, and then that causes an error, causes the case to prevent uh, from creating. But in my situation, whenever those scenarios crop up, I always get a, uh, an email saying, "Hey, this failed." Yeah, normally we do. It's just it was a very small email. Um, we've got no kind of validation rule workflow rules because we're on professional edition. So it's just it's just a strange one. That's why I've kind of been asking a couple of people really. I've not encountered it before. Awesome. Yeah, I mean, I think the community should hopefully be able to uh, provide some some good guidance there um, and help you work through it. So, um, it looks like uh, Fai. Um, I may butcher this, so I apologize. Faisal, uh, you had a, your hand raised for a question. Faisal, are you there? All right. Maybe no question anymore. Um, let's see, does anybody else have uh, any uh, questions? Uh, Laura, do you have a question or anything? No, I'm just feeling like <laughs> I was starting down the path for the Chatter Classic and that was part of a decision point uh, that we used for um, upgrading with the big you know, promotion that they had. And I'm like, oh crap. <laughs> I, have a, I have a quick side question. Like, have you guys, any one of you used the app called Squid, S-K-U-I-D? Yes. Okay, how do you like it? I'm just trying to explore that one and see how um, to play I with it. I think what you could do with it is 
pretty darn nifty. Um, I have struggled with the cost of it. Oh, okay. You know, that, that's been the biggest thing is, hey, yeah, this is pretty neat, but it does the cost of the UI um, make sense for the limited use cases? Yeah, because that's what I'm trying to propose to my manager. I looked at the tool, I saw the demo, but the very first reaction for his, his reaction was the same, like cost $10 per user per month. Yeah, and and depending on the users, that can be. I mean, <laughs> it seems reasonable, but if you, if you're looking, if your use case was well, this is really for going to be used by a small handful of our items, and it's really only giving one page layout, then the ROI is very very limited. If uh, it was going to be like your new standard way of de this uh, de deploying pages to your users, it might make more sense. So it just create new page layout, so there will be like separate page layout which we will build using their apps. So and then we can decide if so if we are going to launch it for selective users, so we give them the access to this layout which we created using this app. Is that how it works? Um, I think that's one of the options that you can do since the what what it really is is just a series of visual force pages. Okay. But uh I don't know. For, you would have to work with Squid as to say, hey, if if we had 100 users and I really only want to use it with 10, how that how they're going to treat you? Because they may say you have 100 users, you got to pay 100 times 10 per month. Mm. Sure. But uh, I, they are really nice folks. Um, I would go grab uh, a developer org and install it in your dev org. The thirty day trial that they have. Yeah, and, and they're really good. Um when I started playing around with it, um they were really good at answering my questions and, and, and uh giving me some suggestions and passing me guides and things like that. And it looks awesome. pretty nifty. It is nifty. <laughs> Cool. Anybody else uh, have any questions? We're about seven minutes out here, so I want to make sure if we have any other questions. We so can how often are these held and all that? Um, know, how often are these held? Yeah, held. Yeah. I yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, I stumbled upon we, it. Uh, yeah, right now our, our schedule is essentially every other Friday um, at the same time. But... Oh. Um, yeah, so but we are, you know, looking at, you know, adjusting those times and trying to be, you know, as flexible as possible to get uh you know, to allow as many people to join as they they want. Apparently there is a uh like a non-profit um uh for the foundation office hours I think are at this time. So, um and we've got some feedback that uh those people would like to join as well. So, we're going to try to we may adjust that, but as of right now, um that's the time. Definitely, uh, you know, follow the uh, the group on uh, success. Um, Salesforce.com um, out in the community, the MVP Office Hours group, because we'll post any you know updates there um, as far as uh, as time. So yeah, and and I also uh, you know will you know obviously tweet out the link and stuff like that for um, um, the next one. Um, so the next one will actually be, I guess, the the Friday after uh, Dreamforce. Um, so, do and speaking of Dreamforce, real quick, or uh, is anybody on the line? Um, I know Brian's going. Um, is anybody else going to uh, to Dreamforce? I am. I'm going. This is Eric. Laura. <clears throat> awesome, awesome. Well, I would definitely encourage you guys to come see us at the uh, Success Community Zone. Um, at the uh, is it the Brian? Remind me, I'm blanking right now. Is it the Hilton? It's at the right. Hilton. I think Hilton. it's in one of the yeah. ballrooms. Yeah. Yeah. So come there. We're we're gonna have free lattes, which is awesome, um, <laughs> all week long. And then there's gonna we'll have a Genius Bar, um, um, and we'll have uh, some community um, like theater type sessions. So should be a should be a great time. And if you got blank spots on your calendar, yeah, it's at the Hilton. 
Um, if you have blank spots on your calendar, uh, we do have MVPs hosting an Answers Live panel, so it's very similar to the MVP office hours. Um, I think there's three different sessions of them this year. Yeah, I think I'm yeah. coming to one of them. Okay, cool. cool. Yeah, so. Thank you very much. So, uh, yeah, we'd love to meet you guys up there. So, um, if we don't have any more questions, I'm giving you four minutes back in your day. So. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Awesome. Thanks, Bye. everyone. Have a good week. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Please stand by.